Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Clear Your Head Yoga. Today is Sunday, August 22nd, first day of Virgo season. Welcome. <laughs> um, and my name is Kiki, my pronouns are she and they. And for today's class, it might be helpful to have blocks or some kind of block like situation. Also might be helpful to have blankets. There's always a little bit some actions on the knees. Um, and that's pretty much it for today. <laughs> so to start, we'll come to lie down and please come to any posture that feels just easeful and comfortable. I'm gonna stay seated um, just in this beginning part. So feel free to just follow my words and, and not my actions. And just come to get settled. You can come into a beginning Shavasana with the legs extended, the eyes closed. If you want to curl up on your side, because that feels best for you, that's really sweet and you're more than welcome to do so. Landing wherever you want to land. And we'll start in our refined or just comfortable position first with five delicious breaths. You're welcome to place your hands right onto the belly and or your chest. And to feel the breath underneath you, breathing in through your nose if you can, filling up all the way. And slow exhale out through the mouth. You're welcome to gently close the lips as if you were blowing bubbles. And then again, trying a deep breath in. And a slow breath out, taking three more breaths in this way. As you inhale, imagining the breath traveling through every single corner of the body, into the arms, the elbows, into each hair follicle, down the legs, out through the toes, deep into the pelvis, all around the belly. Taking one more around, probably around our fifth breath or so. And then letting your breath come into a relatively not a little bit. Feel free to let the mouth close. Again, just breathing out of the nose. If you can. And consider for a moment that now in this body, five deep breaths later, that things have changed. That in the short amount of time that we spent breathing, pulled in oxygen that made its way into blood cells that traveled through the bloodstream and entered into muscles and bones and ligaments and organs. That new cells have been born and old cells have died away. That in each moment of our human lives, we are in a process of becoming, continuously unfolding in this human journey of ours, continuous process of um, birthing, of newness, and of falling away, and our transition into the autumn season as um, this date, this shift into Virgo season represents, it's the transitionary period into fall. Virgo is a beautiful sign, meaning that it is in motion, it means that it's in between. And fall reminds us of this beauty of transition and of process of becoming. And a challenging thing around becoming is that there's so many unknowns within it. And the space of the unknown can often feel a little dark, a little, uh, a little anxiety producing, maybe even fearful. Yet it's something that we all come to all the time. It's the time. Whether it's in, say, a work life or career kind of situation, whether it's more internal processes of how we understand ourselves to be. So just consider for a moment for yourself all of the ways or any of the ways that 
perhaps in this moment you are in a process of becoming what's changing, what's shifting, what might be a space of unknown. The dictionary describes become as beginning to be. What are you beginning to be? What are you beginning to be? What are you beginning to be? Our yoga practice is a process of becoming. Well, physically, in the way that we slowly over time perhaps become more open, maybe we become stronger in certain muscles, or. And yet, it's not without this experience of discomfort, of moving through the sticky places where we're not super loose or open. Or we might experience what we register as pain. And so just as we found the deep uh, the deep breathing just at the beginning of the class, we might also recognize and explore the breath as yet again a useful tool with being with being with that discomfort within this process. That's what will be explore it a bit today. So wherever you are, take another inhale, nice and deep as you do so, stretch all of your limbs. You can reach your arms above your head. Reach out long through your toes. And with your exhale, just let your whole body relax. Let the whole body release into the earth, into your mat. And then again, inhale, lengthen the fingertips and the elbows, stretch the toes and the knees. And exhale, release it all. Last time, inhale to lengthen. To stretch and elongate, nice and full starfish energy out through the limbs. And exhale, let it go and just be. Feel all of the places where the body is connected to the floor. And that space of not doing, just being, noticing from head, arms, shoulders, chest, belly, hips, legs, and feet. Start to slowly bend the right knee to bring the right foot flat onto the ground. And then bend the left knee to bring the left foot flat onto the ground. With the feet planted and the lower back connected to the earth, gently rock your knees from right to left, letting them fall completely to either side. Keeping the back body just settled, not moving. And then begin to replant your feet down onto the earth. Take your right knee, cross it all the way over your left knee. So knee stacked on top of knee. Holding that position, bring the legs in towards your chest. See if you can grab a hold onto either the feet, the ankles, the calves. So your right hand will grab the left foot or ankle or calf, the left hand grabs the right foot or ankle or calf. Knees together, feet wide open. And as you hold onto the feet, you can draw them in towards the body and then gently rock again from right to left. You might notice that as you rock further towards the left side, the outer right hip feels a little bit more sensation.
Yeah. Deep breath in. Letting the whole back just stay easy on the mat. And then come back into a sense of stillness. Let your hands release your feet. Unfurl your legs, crossing left knee over right. Draw both legs in towards the body. The hands can grab opposite ankle, foot, or shin. So now, again, the left hand grabs the right foot. Right hand grabs the left. And then again, begin to rock from right to left, side to side. And notice here, perhaps, that as you rock further towards the right side, the left outer hip finds a little bit of opening and stretch. Gently drawing the inner thighs in towards each other here, you might actually squeeze the legs towards the midline of the body. The hips being one of the most challenging places to unfurl, what you become. Start to come back into stillness here and release your hands from your feet and legs. Unfurl the legs again. Stretch both of the legs up towards the sky. And then interlace your fingers. Bring them behind your head. So let your head rest in the hammock of your palms. Feel your elbows wide to either side, left and right. Mm -hmm. Find a little bit of energy of the back of your armpits, sliding forward and up. It's almost like a, you might feel it like a gentle external rotation, but this purposeful intention to open your armpits towards the sky. And then go ahead and lower the right leg towards the ground, letting it hover a few inches off the floor. The left leg stays long. Deep breath in as you exhale, bring the right elbow across the body, bend the left knee and bring them to touch. Keep the right elbow across the body. Lengthen the left leg to meet the right, holding the twist. Exhale, bring the left knee back in and lower the head down. Switching sides. Exhale, left elbow to right knee. Hold it here. Inhale, stretch the right leg to meet the left. Exhale, bring that right knee right back in, holding the twist, and then switch. Exhale, cross body. Inhale, lengthen the left leg. Exhale, bring the leg back in. Inhale. Exhale, left elbow to right knee. Inhale, lengthen the right leg. Exhale, bring it back in, and then switch. Continuing here, taking a full exhale to bring elbow to knee, a full inhale to lengthen, bringing that leg back in, and then inhale, drop the head. Exhale again, and breath wherever you are. Out breath. Take one more time each side. Draw navel towards the spine. Spine towards the floor. Exhale, bring both knees into your chest. Plant both feet down on the floor. Again, windshield wiper the legs. The next time the knees fall fully over to the right or fall to the right, let them come all the way over, roll into a fetal position on the right side, and then use your hands to press your way up towards a seated posture. Any sort of posture that's seated that feels comfortable for you. I feel like my camera is tilted, so I'm gonna just fix it real fast. Cause we're like at an angle. That's better. All right, so come into a seated posture. 
Then take your hands with the thumbs extended, but then the other four fingers kind of together. And then hook the thumbs in your armpits. Yeah, right in the pits. Get them as far back in there as you can. And then allow the palms of the hands to actually hug in to your rib cage. And then from here, feel the thumbs hook inside the armpits forward and up. So the motion of the other fingers is forward and up, almost like it's moving along the, the surface of a circle. And then notice how this actually draws the rib cage high and the sternum high. Allow the shoulder blades to continue to draw together on the back, feeling again the sense that the backs of your armpits are coming forward. And then hold that there in the heart, but let the arms lower onto the body. Just bring the hands down, shoulders relaxed, but heart lifted, backs of the armpits sliding forward. We're coming to this sensation a few times. So just familiarizing ourselves with it. Exhale, draw the chin towards your chest. Inhale, right ear to right shoulder. Continue the head roll all the way around, letting the head drop back, opening the throat, keeping the heart open. Continue around as the chin drops towards the chest, let the chest rise to meet the chin. So keeping that nice open space in the front body. Take one more full circle wherever you are. And then the next time your chin comes to meet the chest, switch directions. Left ear to left shoulder. Breathing the whole way around. One more full circle on this side. And the next time your chin drops down toward your chest again, inhale, lift the gaze, lift the arms high overhead. Interlace the fingers, flip the palms, stretch the palms away from you, round the back, and then lower the chin to your chest. Feel the shoulder blades widen, feel the back body widen and spread. Inhale, lift to tall, press the palms towards the sky. Again, draw the backs of the armpits forward. Exhale again, rounding, release the head fully, stretch the back body, and then inhale to rise and bring the armpits forward, exhaling again. Moving with the rhythm of your own breath now, between these two postures, this pseudo seated cat and cow. The next time you find an in-breath that pulls you upwards, pause, open the palms, twist open to the right, taking your left hand to your right leg and the right hand behind you. Inhale to lift the spine, exhale to draw the navel back. Spinning around, taking the left rib cage forward and the right rib cage back. Inhale back to center as the arms lift high overhead. And then exhale, spin the other way, taking your right hand across the body, left hand behind you. Nice long slide, and then exhale, spin around, bringing awareness to your seat. Soft in the belly. Hold over the hips. Take one more breath here. Inhale, come back to center. Bring the arms high up overhead. Then exhale, bring your arms down. We're going to come into the tabletop. You can roll over the legs or swing the legs around, whichever way suits you. And come into your tabletop a little bit more towards the, the back of your mat, actually because we're coming, but we're gonna kind of shift and move just a little bit here. 
Tuck your toes underneath, and we're going to actually shift right away into downward dog. And we'll take this first down dog, let the feet walk in place a little bit. Shake it out the legs, bending in the knees. Yeah, you can totally freeform this if you want to lift the leg up and take a hit. That's totally fine. Whatever feels good as you wake up the body this, this evening or afternoon or morning, depending on where you are. Start to come into a sense of stillness here in the shape. Take your gaze back. See the space in between your right big toe and the toe next to it. Very awkward space, but we're gonna take that space and hook the space right next to your big toe onto your left heel. So we're using the right toes against the left heel and gently guiding the left heel towards the floor, lengthening out the back of the left leg, sending the left heel towards the ground. Inhale. Exhale. Last breath, inhale. Exhale. Inhale the right leg all the way back up into the sky for three legged. Exhale, bring the right knee in towards your chest, let it cover. Re exhale, release the right shin to the ground, the whole shin. You might need to walk your hands forward just to get into proper alignment again. And then inhale the left leg up, tabletop position, left leg extended up behind you. Exhale, send the left foot outside of your left hand. Let the hips slide towards the earth. Hook the thumbs as you rise high for crescent lunge. Again, sliding the backs of the armpits forward, lifting the heart, lowering the pelvis. Belly draws in and up like a straw towards the heart. With an exhale, sink the hips behind you. Widen your arms. We're shifting into half Hanumanasana. So this might be a space where, depending on what's underneath you, some cushion under that back knee will help. Also a sweet space for some blocks, especially early on in the practice. We're not super warm. So noticing how your hamstring feels there. Inhale as you find length through the spine, really send the sits bones far back behind you, and then exhale, gently fold over the leg. We're not aiming for the world's most intense stretch in this moment, but just letting the body fold, keeping a micro bend in that left knee. Just for one more breath here, not too long. With your next inhale, start to come back forward, step into your left foot. Shift the blocks. We're going to reverse this whole thing. Hands come on the inside of the left leg. Swing that left leg all the way up and back behind you, lifting it off the floor. Exhale the left toes to the earth. Press down into your hands, down into your left foot. Lift the right knee in towards your chest and send it back for three legged dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, slide forward into plank pose. Exhale, lower knees, chest and chin. Heart open yet again. Release the pelvis, point the toes as you come up into cobra. Again, instead of the shoulders sliding forward, let the armpits come forward and the shoulders reach back. Exhale, the forehead to the floor. And then tuck your toes and send yourself back to Adho Svanasana. Gently walk yourself back to bring the feet towards the back of your mat if they're not already, if your position got shifted. Gaze at the left big toe. Notice the space right beside it. And then take the left foot and hook it onto the right heel. Using the left foot to draw the right heel towards the floor. Keeping the fingertips nice and spread. 
you might start to feel a little bit more pressure wanting to release into the shoulders. Keep pressing the floor away, facing the shoulder girdle. For three, two, one. Inhale, lift the left leg high for three legged dog. Exhale, bring the left knee in towards your chest. And then release the left shin fully onto your mat. Walk your hands forward so that they were rest right underneath your shoulder. And then rise the right leg off of the ground. Exhale, send the right leg outside of your right hand. Let the hips soften towards the earth. Hook the thumbs the opposite hook and reach high. All other eight fingertips spread wide. Exhale as you root the feet and legs into the ground. Hold that grounding. Inhale, lift the belly and the heart. Shine the armpits forward. With your next exhale, starting to shift into Hak Manasana. Open the arms wide, send your hips back. Move that right leg towards straight as you fold over the leg. You might seek to take hold of some support with blocks or send the blanket underneath you. This position is super uncomfortable for you, Julie. If so, you can come out of the bend of that knee or adjust as you need to. Take one more breath here, friends. With an exhale, start to shift your weight, bringing it back into that right foot. Both hands will come on the inside of your right foot. Reversing everything. Swing the right leg all the way back, lifting it up off of the floor. Exhale, send the right toes to the earth. Press into the right toes and both hands. With a deep breath out, lift the left knee in towards your chest. Draw the navel in and send the left leg back for three-legged dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, plank pose. Exhale, knees, chest, and chin, shoulders back. Inhale, cobra, or upward facing dog. Exhale, back, downward facing dog. Two more breaths here. At the bottom of your next exhale, walk, step, or hop yourself to the top of your mat. Coming into Uttanasana, feet hips distance apart and toes pointed directly forward and parallel. Let the body hang over your legs. Feel free to take the opportunity here to grab opposite elbows or interlace the fingers behind your back. Just letting the upper body hang, finding a sense of ease here. One of my favorite quotes around becoming and around transition is from the Velveteen Rabbit. You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily or have sharp edges or who have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes drop out and you get loose in your joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all because once you are real, you can't be ugly except to people who don't understand while this quote was speaking, particularly about a stuffed animal. It's also speaking to all of the transition that happened over time and that that sense of becoming 
the a lifelong adventure and journey. If you have some sort of clasp or grasp of the arms, let that go. Slide the palms up towards your shin. This is inhale and lift the spine for a long flat back. Exhale, release yet again, fully folding over the lid. Inhale, stand and lift the arms up overhead. Third Vahastasana. And then exhale the arms down through center and then soften them by your sides. Inhale, lift the arms, lift the gaze. Exhale, fold right back over the legs. Inhale, half lift. And exhale, fold. Inhale, the right leg back. Tap the back knee, open your heart as you face forward, shoulders back. Exhale, downward dog, Anamuka Svanasana. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra, or upward facing. Arm hits forward, squeeze the shoulder blades back. And then exhale, downward face. Inhale, the right leg up into the sky. And then exhale, bring the right knee in towards your chest. Plant the right foot down onto the floor. Inhale, rise, high lunge. Take your gaze forward, drop the shoulders down. Exhale, open here, Vajrasana two. Send your left heel to the floor and open the arms out wide like a T. Doing a little bit of choreography here. <laughs> so flip the right palm to the sky. Inhale, reverse the warrior as you straighten your right leg, taking the right arm up and overhead. Exhale, right back into warrior two. A little different. This time, inhale, reverse the warrior, flex your right foot, lifting the toes off of the ground. And then rotate your right toes to the left. All 10 toes face the left. Keep reaching the right arm up and overhead. And then we're going to take a full circle with the body. So right arm continues to reach over to the left until you fold all the way over the legs and cross the leader Padatanasana. Keep going through center, full circle. Let the left arm reach out towards your right foot and continue to bring you all the way up. Yes, exactly. Keep reaching there, Julie. Exactly. Turn your left toes out, warrior two, to the back of your mat. Solid. You made it. Lift the left palm up as you straighten the left knee, reverse your warrior here. Exhale, bend the left knee and cartwheel your hands to the floor, to the back of your mat, the new front, where the left leg is. Plant your palms into the ground. Inhale, lift the left leg all the way up and back. This time, feel free to open the hip and bend the knee. You're welcome to take a couple circles here in the hips in either direction. And then switch the direction wherever you are. Inhale that left leg back up. And exhale, bring it right back down. Inhale, lifting the left leg up again. Exhale, bring it through to the front of your mat, plant it down. Root into the legs, rise high, high lunge, arms by the ears. Take a moment here to gaze forward and drop, relax the shoulder, relax the neck. Let the back heel come to the floor as you open into warrior two. Still towards the back of your mat, gazing out over left fingertips. Reversing everything now, flip the left palm to the sky as you reverse your warrior, straighten your left knee. Exhale right back into Virabhadrasana two. 
This time again, flip the left hand as you reverse your warrior, flex your left foot, rotate your left toes to face the left. Keep reaching the left arm all the way up and over towards your right leg as we go into a full circle. Drop the head all the way down. Let your right arm take over as it reaches toward your left foot. Continue the circle all the way around. Turn the right toes out, warrior two. Yes. Right back at the front of the mat. Flip the right palm up. Lengthen the front knee, reverse. Exhale, bend the front knee and cartwheel the arms down. Let the back heel spin up as you root the palms down. Send your right leg all the way up and back, this time opening the hip. Once again, you can stay here with the hip open or start to find some circles through the hip joint. Switch the direction of your circles. And then lengthen the right leg again and drop the foot down into downward facing dog. You can take yourself into some kind of movement or flow here or lower the knees and shift your way back into child's pose. Bringing the, and wherever you are, we'll meet in child's pose. So if you wanna move through some movement, that's totally great. We'll all meet with the shins down, the forehead release, arms soft on your mat. Follow your breath here as you come into this resting shape, just following each inhale and each exhale. Notice all of the ways that you have become in the last 45 minutes or so. If you've become warmer, if you've become more awake, Um, more agitated or just notice what has shifted in this time. Take three more breaths here just as you are. With your next inhale, slowly start to lift your gaze and take both of your arms out in front of you, shifting temporarily forward into tabletop, just enough to tuck the toes underneath and then to drive the hips back into Adhanuka Svanasana. Breathing all the way in, and all the way out. Shake the head no, nod the head yes, letting the head and neck be eased, letting the shoulders continue to find softness. And then with your next exhale, beginning to walk, step, or hop your way to the front of your mat. Coming into Uttanasana. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, to dive over the legs. Inhale, stand, arms up overhead. Bring the palms together as you gaze towards the thumbs and then exhale, sliding the palms through center, releasing them by your side. Stepping really firmly into your right, or sorry, into your left foot, we're gonna lift the arms and lift the right knee into your chest. Flex that right foot, giving it some pretty clear energy. And then interlace the fingers, bring them behind your head. We're finding the same position on the ground. So elbows open wide to either side, armpits really spacious. Backs of the armpits slide forward. 
Now, a little bit of a fun balance here. We're going to begin to stretch the right leg out in front of us. As you do so, as you lengthen the right knee, start to lean your head back into the hammock of your palms. As you lean the head back into the hammock of your palms, let the back of the armpits come forward even more. So the shoulder blades press forward into your sternum and the sternum lifts towards the sky. With an exhale, start to come back to vertical, drop your right leg, send it all the way behind you for warrior three. Leg, foot, and upper body all on one line. Elbows lift up away from the ground, almost like knees flapping. Start to slowly bend your left knee and send your right toes far behind you. Bring them to the earth, come all the way up, high lunge. Saw that I can switch my position for a moment. Ah. Inhale, stretch the arms high. Fingertips can shift away from the back of the head. Exhale, open, warrior two. Send the back heel down. We've been here before as we lengthen this front knee, lift the toes, rotate them to face the right side, arms overhead. Exhale, open the arms and forward, hinge at the waist as you come to fold forward. Right into Prasarita Padatanasana. Keeping all 10 toes firmly rooted but pressing down into the outer edge of both feet while you hang over the legs, feeling the sit bones gently spread apart. Right, we're going into another fun sequence here. I think it's fun. <laughs> so inhale, lift halfway, bringing the hands right underneath your shoulders. And then start to gently tiptoe the heels and the feet a little bit closer in, maybe just wider than hips distance, so they don't aren't too far. All right, stepping into your right foot, inhale, lift the left leg behind you as if you were moving into warrior three or like a standing split. Exactly. As you exhale, both knees will bend, sending your left knee behind your right. So we've been here before at the beginning of class, coming all the way down to sit, all the way onto the earth. Uh-huh, when that left knee comes behind you, exactly that, exactly that. So I'm facing the side of my mat. It doesn't really matter where you're facing because we're doing a whole spinning situation. <laughs> so right knee is crossed over left. Let your hands grab a hold of the tops of your feet. And then with an inhale, lift the sternum, pull on the tops of the feet, drive the elbows back as the heart lifts high. Yeah. Yeah, Dee, if you need to switch around, you can, if it's, if it's just easier to see, no worries. <laughs> I'm just, we're literally going in like this weird circle, so we're all just gonna be mixed up. <laughs> Sweet. If you take another deep in breath here with a lengthy spine, start to let yourself fold over the legs. You can walk your hands forward and release the feet. And just fold over here, letting that outer right hip have some time to open. Completely dropping the head. Slow inhale, slowing your breath down. And slow exhale through the mouth. Inhale as you start to lift yourself up to vertical. Taking the hands behind you, let that right leg open and swing out to the side. Body faces directly forward out over that left leg. Lifting the left arm up, taking a side bend over towards that extended right leg. If you're very open in your side, you might find that the left hand can grab the right toes, and then you can continue to twist open. I'm feeling quite tight myself, but you can explore that if you like. 
And maybe just let the head drop completely, letting that right ear drop towards the right shoulder. Inhale, come all the way back up to vertical. We're gonna keep the legs here so that that right leg is extended, left knee is bent. But start to change the orientation of your body. So gently pulling your right hip back so that now you're facing over the right leg. Janu Shirshasana. Yeah, same thing. Find an inhale to lift tall as you exhale, hinging at the waist, keeping the length and integrity of the spine. So even here, especially, if you find that you start to round, really think again of bringing the backs of the armpits forward, like a scoop. Julie, if you notice the upper body kind of concaving and lifting away from the thigh, see what it's like to draw the heart and the back body towards the thigh. Yeah, kind of like the, the feeling and the sensation of cow pose of the heart leaning towards the earth. Take one more breath where you are, my friends. Hmm. And then inhale, slowly lift the vertical. Take both of your hands, grab the outer edges of your legs, plant both of your feet down. Right hand behind you, left arm lifts up as you raise the hips high. And then exhale, bring the hips right back down. This is where we go into the choreography. Very fun, I'm excited. <laughs> Let the knees fall all the way over to your right as you come to sit. Spin yourself around, look over your right shoulder. This completes the circle. <laughs> As we look over the right, bring the palms down onto your mat. Spin around to tabletop, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Sweet. Very confusing, but we all made it in some way, so I'm proud of us. <laughs> Once again, if you want to move through movement here, you can shift through some kind of vinyasa or flow. Otherwise, begin to make your way towards the front of the mat. And we'll all meet in Tadasana in mountain pose. So finding your own way there in a way that suits you. Once you find your way in mountain pose, start to root down to your right foot. Inhale the left knee up, rise the arms by your ears. Flex the left foot by a bit. Interlace your fingers, bring it behind the head, elbows open and armpits forward. Now, as we begin to slowly extend the left leg, lean the head back into the hammock of your palms. Draw the backs of the armpits forward, maybe open into this baby back bend. Exhale, come to vertical and slide your left leg back as we swing into Virabhadrasana three or warrior three. Elbows lift up away from the floor, drawing the shoulder blades even more firmly onto the back. Start to bend your right knee, your standing leg, slowly descending your left toes to the floor. Inhale, vertical high lunge. You can release the hands and take the arms long. Exhale, open warrior two as you send the left heel to the floor and widen the arms. And here before, so it's familiar as you lengthen the right knee, lift the right toes, rotate them to the left and bring the arms overhead. Exhale as you fold over the legs, bringing the hands towards the floor and softening the head. If tripod headstand is in your practice, this is a really sweet place to take it. I won't be directing you there, but again, if it's something that you do, feel free to do so here.
Otherwise, just let the body hang. You're welcome to bend one knee at a time, gently opening through the inner thighs and groin. Slowly coming back into center. Inhale, lift halfway. Begin to tiptoe your feet back in so they're about hip or shoulder distance apart. And then root down into your left leg. Start to lift the right leg up into the sky as if you are shifting into standing split. Exhale, bending both knees. Bring the right knee behind the left as you slowly descend to the ground, bringing the hips down. The knees will stay together or close. The feet will spread apart. Let me adjust this camera. Ooh, okay. And let the hands grab a hold of either foot or ankle. Pull the feet back to lift the heart. Draw the inner thighs of the legs together. And then exhale, start to fold forward. You can bring your arms forward and then relax the head down. Let each breath invite, invite the body more deeply into this forward fold. One more inhale and an exhale. Slowly start to rise. Take the arms behind you to make way to swing the left leg all the way out and out to the side. Reaching the right arm up and overhead as you come into the side bend, reaching right fingers towards left toes. Maybe the hand grabs the toes and can work on spinning the heart forward. Or maybe we just keep working on opening the side body, opening up the QL muscles of the low back. All really sweet places to be. Let the head drop for the last few breaths here, opening up the right side of the neck and throat. And then inhale, come to rise. Begin to slide your left hip back some while you rotate the body to face the left leg. So moving into Johnny Sure Shots, not fully facing, I can spin myself around so we can see the work. Yeah. Lengthen the heart and then fold, hinging at the waist. Take an exhale here. As you inhale, start to come back up forward, vertical, lift the spine. Let the hands grab either side of the legs, bringing the knees and planting the feet. Left hand behind you as you press into the hand and feet, lift the hips. Keep that right arm up and overhead. Exhale, send the hips back down. This time, letting the knees fall over to your left. As the legs fall to the left, look over your left shoulder. Start to bring both hands over to the left. Come into tabletop. Reorient yourself towards the front of your mat if you 
need to tap your toes and downward dog. From downward dog, inhale the right leg high to the sky. Exhale, bring the lower right leg through to the front of your mat as we shift towards pigeon. Bringing the lower leg down, pointing the left toes. If you need to here, take a moment to gently slide the right hip back. Really bringing that left hip forward into parallel. And then from there, if you'd like, you can start to come forward over that right leg, maybe even grabbing a block underneath the forehead or knees. And we're gonna settle in here for, for several, several breaths. Rainer Maria Rilke has a quote from probably one of his most famous texts, which is Letters to the Young Poet. And he speaks to the uncertainties of life, the questions that we have. And he says, living the questions. Try to love the questions themselves as if they were locked rooms or books written in a foreign language. Don't search for the answers which could not be given to you now because you would not be able to live them. And the point is to live everything. Live the questions now. Perhaps then someday far in the future, you will gradually, without even noticing it, live your way into the answer. Living the questions. In a sense, being with the, the unknown the not knowing, and all that comes with that. One of the most uh, critical aspects of, um, at least like in Buddhist community, but also in yoga community is that of the Sangha, the Sangha being your spiritual community, the community, the people that you practice with and that you find community with. And spiritual community is one of the most important aspects of moving through these transitions well. Having the support of people that are on similar paths. That's one of the, the major benefits of being able to have spaces like this, even virtual spaces that we're gathering in together. So we'll start to switch to the second side. You can start to make your way back up towards a vertical space. Plant the hands, tuck your back toes, and send that right leg back into downward dog, just as a transition. And then when you're ready, you can send the left leg through and come into pigeon on the second side. Go ahead and adjust the legs. Slide the left hip slightly back so the right hip can really drop forward. And then when you're ready, take your weight forward and hold over the legs if that feels good and for your body if you'd like to. and just being here.
three more breaths, just as you are. With your next in-breath, start to make your way out of the shape, coming up towards vertical. This time, instead of shifting into down dog, just sit onto that left hip and let the right leg swing around to meet the left. Give the legs a shake out if you need to. And then slowly start to come down to your back. Take the right knee into your chest. Give it a good squeeze in. Allow that left foot to stay planted on the floor and then take the right leg into a half happy baby. So grab or reach your arm on the inside of the thigh, but grab the pinky toe side of the foot. The thigh and the right knee can Drop down towards that right armpit as you flex the foot to face the sky. If it feels good here with the left knee bent, you can stay here. Or keeping the right leg as it is in half happy baby, you can explore lengthening that left leg along the floor. You can keep your left leg wherever it is, whether bent or straight, either way is just fine. Transition your right hand from half happy baby holding the foot to hold right back onto the right knee and start to guide the right knee across the body as you come into a supine twist here. Right leg crosses over to the left side, extend your right arm out to the right and look over towards your right hand. Exhale as you come right back to center, come onto the back. Plant your right foot down onto the mat and draw the left knee in towards your chest. Give it a good hug in towards you. And then shift into half happy baby on this side. Left arm reaches inside of the thigh to grab the pinky toe side of your foot. And then direct the sole of the foot towards the sky. Option to keep the right knee bent and foot flat, or you can explore lengthening the right leg now. Stretching the right heel out far away from you. Wherever your right leg has landed, just let it stay exactly as it is. Start to slowly transition your left hand from at the foot to the knee or shin of your left leg. And then start to direct that left leg across the body all the way to the right side as you come into a twist on the second side. Gaze over towards your left hand and take a breath in. Finding the softest belly. Inhale, exhale, and slowly unfurl out of this twist. Beginning to stretch both of your legs long onto the mat as you shift your way into a final resting shape into Shavasana. If you need to grab a hold of any support, please do so.
and then let the eyes close or relax. And then just take note of all of the things that came to be over the last hour and some change. All the minute shifts in the body, whether it felt physically by temperature or energetically. Before we begin to transition out of the pasta, I offer some final words from the Louis Vuitton poem, poem on fear and its becoming. It is said that before entering the sea, a river trembles with fear. She looks back at the path she has traveled from the peaks of the mountains, the long winding road crossing forests and villages. And in front of her, she sees an ocean so vast that to enter there seems nothing more than to disappear forever. But there is no other way. The river cannot go back. Nobody can go back. To go back is impossible in existence. The river needs to take the risk of entering the ocean because only then will fear disappear because that's where the river will know. It's not about disappearing into the ocean, but of becoming. So as you're ready, if you haven't already, start to Make some small movements in the body. Take a yawn, a stretch, or a deeper breath, and 
slowly let that movement transition you onto either left or right side, coming into a fetal position for a moment, and then gently pressing your way up to sit, finding a comfortable seat, allowing eyes to close or relax yet again. Taking a moment to honor yourself and your body in all of the ways that you have become and become and become over time. And to honor the body for all of the ways that it shall continue to unfold and become and become to come. Like to bring the hands onto the body or into onto the mudra and in front of the heart, pressing the palms together, and feeling the sternum and the heart space just below the thumbs. May all of our becoming and our unfolding be a benefit not only for ourselves, but also to the more comfortable we get to really come in contact with. And I think you all heard Thank you.